Well, Florida's ban on most abortions after six weeks of pregnancy before many women even know they are pregnant went into effect on Wednesday. And some doctors are concerned that women in the state will no longer have access to the health care they need. The new ban has an exception for saving a woman's life, as well as in cases involving rape and incest. The start of the new ban brought Vice President Kamala Harris to Jacksonville, where she said the abortion ban is a direct result of former President Donald Trump appointing three of the six U.S. Supreme Court justices who voted almost two years ago to overturn the longstanding precedent that protected abortion rights. This is a fight for freedom. This is a fight for freedom. The fundamental freedom to make decisions about one's own body and not have their government tell them what they're supposed to do. Former President Trump campaigning this week defended his actions. Now I say it's up to the state. They'll ask me a question about it. I say that's up to the state. So I say to you, uh, I think we did a very good job in that. A lot of people are very happy with it. Tara, what's been the impact of the six-week ban so far? I think there's two stories unfolding in Florida that show an impact. The first is directly on women. I think we're going to start seeing the terrible story of the 11, 12-year-old girl who, through abuse, found herself pregnant, not even knowing her own body, or the mother that prayed for a pregnancy but her body can't hold it, not being able to access reproductive care because regardless of the exceptions, there's a chilling effect on providers actually meeting the health care needs of women. And so I think that we're really seeing on a personal front these stories starting to unwind. We're already hearing about women sitting in their cars overheating so they could be presenting a septic at emergency rooms. This is the first time in history. I, of course, have now less rights than my mother did. My two daughters have less rights than I do. The other impact is constitutional. You know, we had 50 years of precedent in this area. Now we have uncertainty. Do I have the right of self-determination? Do I have the right to health care? Do I have autonomy? It seems very unclear, and it seems that it's really creating a hostile environment for, for women in the state of Florida and across the country. Country. But there's also a political aspect to this. Um, we saw that uh, the presumptive nominee for the Republican Party has come out and said, I lean into states' rights. So if states want to have um, tracking of women's pregnancies, I'll go along with that. Does that mean that we're now going to be um, looking at women's pregnancies and reporting it to the states like the state wanted us to do with female athletes and their periods, what are they going to do with that information? You know, one in four women actually have the heartbreak of a miscarriage. Will we criminalize that? This is doing nothing for our constitutional protections. And our Constitution is clear. I should have the same rights and dignity to self-determination as a man. And the laws do not show that. And they're creating hostility in health care and hostility in the laws. Sharon, what's your view on the impact of this law so far now that it took effect on Wednesday? Well, we have this in the state of Florida. We have a court that ruled in favor of pro providing protections for a baby in the womb that has a heartbeat. We have the six-week ban, and we have Amendment 4, uh, also known as the No Parents, No Doctors, and No Definitions Abortion Amendment on the November ballot. So. Uh, there will be a lot of money and competing messages on the issue um, in the state of Florida and other states who also have some am state amendments on their ballot in November. Um, so this is actually the conversations that should have taken place decades ago. Um, and today we know more about the baby in the womb than we did decades ago when Roe versus Wade was was. Uh, voted on by the Supreme Court back then. So uh, the, the fear mongering, you know, the left, that's what they do is fear monger. We are always gonna have stories and we have compassion for the issue. But let's really talk about the issue, not in the abstract, but in the entire holistic view of, of, of and hopefully get out of the politicization and actually look at the facts related to the, the issue at hand and the options that women have today, which is totally different than what they had decades ago with regards to uh, birth control, um, tracking devices. If they're talking about tracking, they can track their own periods with, with applications. So women have a lot of options today. Sure, Sharon, could I ask, should, are, are you concerned about what Tara said and that is that women's health may be endangered by this? Well, it's kind of interesting that she brings that up now because according to the Florida um, 
uh, Agency for Healthcare Administration who inspects the abortion clinics in uh, the state of Florida, 25% of those clinics were fined in 2022. I don't think the data is out there for 2023. And a number of those uh, issues that were cited is quite, quite frightening, using expired supplies, not storing medications properly, failure to document parental consent for a minor, uh, I, I, I hate to, to interrupt you, but that means we're going to let women go ahead and sit in cars and get, become septic. I mean, can we turn the conversation to the Constitution? I would love to hear your opinion, Sharon, on it, because the Constitution we, requires we us not to have a religious litmus test. According to the Constitution, well, the Supreme Court ruled under Roe v. Wade there was a right to privacy, which doesn't exist. I mean, it was made up at the time. Oh. So this issue belongs, it belongs at the state. Okay. Let, and so the state is taking this bring, issue. Let me bring. Let me bring. Let me bring. Let me bring Teresa in this. Teresa, are you concerned about uh, women's health care in the future since this legislation has gone taken effect? And also, are we seeing a drain of doctors, OBGYNs, and others that might be treating women who are scared of the implications of this law? Absolutely. Um, I I want to also um, talk about Amendment Four, but firstly, this is the one issue that keeps me up at night. Um, I'm a 30-year-old woman living in Miami. Um, I came from the Dominican Republic, where, like a lot of Latinos, we came to the United States thinking that we were coming to the land of the free. And th this is the reality that we are faced with. Um, healthcare providers, um, as of Wednesday, when this near total ban, let's say, let's say what it is, this is a near total ban, um, came into effect, um, they're having to turn away women at six weeks one day, right? A lot of these women um, are uh, looking to, to, to seek abortion care. A lot of these women don't have access to, um, to, to health care. A lot of these women are undocumented. So when we're talking about exceptions and incest and rape, think about that undocumented woman that has to walk into a police station to report a rape, even if they have the courage to do so. So it is really concerning. And what will happen is that women are going to die. 84,000 patients' lives are on the line. So yes, let's stop politicizing the issue. And I will talk about Amendment 4. Amendment 4 seeks to precisely end government interference between a patient's decision and their um, their doctor, their their medical provider. That is simply what we are trying to do. And this misinformation and blatant lie that it does not include parental consent law, it is literally written in the bill. Voters across the state will be able to literally see it in their ballot. And we are so proud um, to have a coalition of um, healthcare advocates, um, abortion patients, um, and, 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 and people that support uh, a woman to have their full uh, bodily autonomy, which is what this really is about. Sharon, did you want to jump back in for a second? Uh, yes, because uh, the amendment does not define what a medical provider is. That's a That's very broad term. That is absolutely not true. It doesn't define what viability is. Yes, it does. It's it clearly doesn't... defined. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh, it does. So, so this, is, this is the conversation we're going to have, which is, which is good. I think it's great that we're having this conversation. So again we have this kind of uh environment in florida where we've had a couple of bills passed legislatively and now we have a citizen initiated uh amendment on the ballot where the voters can actually vote yeah, and we'll have this debate uh for the rest of the year uh divya i just want to ask you a quick question that is uh both uh, uh the governor the governor says this is the free state of florida when we saw the vice president here a few days ago in Florida, uh, she said this is a freedom issue. So both sides are saying that they're on the side of freedom, Governor DeSantis and the Biden administration. What do you make of that? Yeah, I guess that's who they're sort of trying to appeal to. And um, uh, I think the rhetoric that they're using, I think that's become a loaded word um, in itself. And an important word too. Right. People tend to vote on that issue. Who's gonna give me more freedom? Yeah. All right. I, I just have to say one thing, and I'm so sorry. Just, I totally love the discourse, but the Constitution prevents us from having religious litmus tests. So even if this is a state issue, the U.S. Constitution still protects a woman from a state and the federal government from religion influencing policy. And so the gaslighting of the U.S. Constitution is to mean something that it doesn't 
doesn't hold water in this case. The U.S. Constitution protects my rights, not just the state of Florida's Constitution. And our framers clearly said there's a wall of separation. And there's many faith groups that don't do not believe that a uh, fetus is a live birth until our Jewish friends, our United Church of Christ friends, lots of faith walks. And one faith should not take precedence over another. All right.